Um, as you probably know, the terms of trade is a measure of prices, export prices uh, relative to import prices. It does not measure uh, trade quantities, trade volumes, it measures uh, trade values, trade prices. And this is a bit of a, a very long term look at terms of trade. So we'll look at 140 years, all the way back from the late 19th century through to today. And you can see there's been a couple of spikes during that time. Uh, we had, particularly in recent years, and by recent I mean the last 50 years, you got your Korean War boom and then your more recent mining boom um, around here. For a very long time, Australia's terms of trade were on a downward decline. I'm sure you can see that. Question? Because Australia's main industries revolve around mining, mm -hmm. does this graph work together with commodity prices? Um, it does today, but remember Australia's main production, you know, 100 years ago back then, was agriculture. That was the, the main commodities that Australia used to trade. So back then, this reflected agricultural prices. Today, it, it reflects uh, manufacture, sorry, um, mining prices a little bit more. But that's only on the export side. On the import side, traditionally, it's always been manufacturing prices um, that have determined the, the import side of, of this formula. Um, but what I want you to consider is, look at this, this the 1900 to 1999, basically the last 100 years of the 20th century, it was a downward trend. Okay, the terms of trade were falling. That's bad for Australia. That means we need to export more goods in order to import the same amount of goods. Okay, that's, that's the volume effect of, of lower prices. And it's only been in recent years that it's increased, and it's actually shot up dramatically. Okay, the, the blue line is the actual amount. Uh, the orange line is your five-year moving average. And if we go to the next slide, um, you can actually see it uh, in more recent years, the last 70 years. Uh, the in terms of trade sort of shot up very momentarily in the 50s, the Korean War boom, where there was a large demand for things like wool, um, which Australia produced a lot of. But the mining boom is different. It's seen a more permanent rise in the terms of trade. Okay, so it's more of a structural change. This was cyclical. This is structural. It fell a little bit during the GFC. It's come back a little bit later on, but it's still significantly higher than it used to be. Okay, that's what I want you to get an idea of what the impact of the terms of trade has been. Ten years ago, most economists were very worried about the terms of trade in Australia. Today, um, they're much more um, comfortable with where it's at, um, but it's somewhat unusual that despite really high terms of trade, Australia still runs persistent trade deficits. Okay, so what this means is the higher prices haven't been converted into better trade performance, it just means that Australians buy more imports. So let's have a look a little bit at the terms of trade. So the terms of trade measures the price of exports relative to the price of imports. Again, not volumes, it is prices. Um, Australia has traditionally had a low terms of trade as it exported low value commodities and imported high value manufactured goods. However, the rise of Asia in recent years has meant that the price of manufactured goods has fallen, while the price of commodities like iron ore and coal, uh, I should say, has risen. Uh, the result has been a permanent structural increase in the terms of trade, because okay, so it's a structural change. It's not a cyclical, temporary thing. Yes? A permanent change means the terms of trade consistently remain high. Uh, yeah, if we go back, you can see that this, this if you compare it to the 1950s, yeah, it was a temporary spike. spike. This is not just spike temporary, it's remained up there for uh, quite a few years. This, I'd say, is a spike, but this movement from about 50 up to about 80, that's been that way for almost a decade now. But it's not the money, really. Uh, it is the mining boom. It's, it's, well, it's been going on for 10 years now. That's, that's not temporary. This is temporary. 10 years, you know, a recession is temporary. 10 years is, is the life cycle of uh, most businesses. You know, most businesses don't last more than 10 years. That's a permanent change. Um, you don't live through, you know, if you're a, um, outside of the wool industry around here, you would not get into the wool industry because of this spike. If you're in the mining industry around this time, you would change industry and get into mining. That's what a permanent change means. It's a sort of investment life cycle for businesses. They will shift entirely over to, to mining because of this. So permanent doesn't mean forever and ever and ever. It means for a really long time. That's what structural is about, uh, structural changes. And, and this is likely to go for another 10, 20 years. Not forever. So it is not permanent in the sense that it's forever. But it's a permanent shift in, in the sense that it's not for months or years. It's going to last for decades. Long yeah, so long term is probably a better term. That's right. Um, but you can see it's the rise of Asia that has caused that change to happen. So instead of having high value manufactured goods that Australia would import and low value commodities, agricultural and um, resources goods that would be exported, that has flipped around. Now manufacturing is the cheap goods. 
resources are the more expensive goods. Even food has increased in value quite a bit. Now, sometimes the high terms of trade led by one sector, for example mining, can lead to a high Australian dollar, making other sectors less competitive, such as manufacturing. We've seen that in Australia. This concept is known as Dutch disease. That comes from um, the 1960s in the Netherlands, not, not the tulip um, boom. That was, I think, the 16th or 17th century. That's a, that's a, a bubble. Um, this is Dutch disease. Dutch disease is when um, it was first coined in the 70s after what happened to the Netherlands in the 60s. They found a large amount of natural gas. They started exploiting the natural gas, exporting it. Their currency went up dramatically. As a result, it hurt all the other export industries in that country because they could no longer compete at that high uh, exchange rate. Um, and you're seeing this in Australia at the moment. So one of the reasons why the Australian dollar has been high is because of the mining boom, and that's hurting domestic manufacturing. So that's, that's actually something that is very relevant to Australia at the moment. You will hear um, Dutch disease talked about quite a bit.